What's your favorite scary movie? <laughs> What do you think about that? But you got it on you right now? Oh, yeah. Oh, so the, can we take a look at it? Sure. Oh, I love it. Thumbs up on the moment? Sure. Oh, thumbs up. It was known as a good, bad movie. It was so bad that it was good. Make him Scorpion. Yeah. yeah. Now I'm yelling. People out there are like, what is yelling about Scorpion? <laughs> it's these Piccolo <laughs> you know? I mean, I mean it's, it's crazy, dude. 217 Probcast, we are here, Kyle, alongside, most importantly, the person that you yourselves have requested ever since we started this thing back in September, Chili Bowl Mullet Man, Springfield celebrity, more importantly, I'm going to go ahead and say the most widely read celebrity when it comes to uh, movie reviews here in the 217. Now, he didn't say, I know, he's, he's, you know, he, he, I'm saying it. It's not going to be him. Here's what you have been saying, though. How many movies you like, man? Thanks for coming on the show. Uh, how many movies I like? I mean, I got thousands of different movies I enjoy. First of all, if you don't know uh, Chili, we got to give him, we got to give your backstory here. So you're from Springfield, right? Yes. And you have this amazing haircut, which mm-hmm. obviously is where your name comes from. And you've had this haircut for how long? For over 30 years. 30 years. We know that you like Michelob Ultra. And, uh, yes, we have I do. Offer. I'm going to go ahead and crack one of these bad yeah, boys. Let me crack you. this bad boy. Absolutely. And you know what? Chili, we got to talk about your swag that you have. Josh, our producer, Josh, if you look over there, there you go. We'll <laughs> keep that. Look at that. We'll keep it cold. The Chili Bowl mullet. Ma- and if they want to pick these up, if they want to uh, rock this out, what do they got to do? How do they pick this up? Uh, how do they get it? Um, yeah. You, you, well... At the time, you could just go on to the uh, website, and then from there on, you can uh, order for one. Okay, awesome. Yeah. And, well, that's yours, man. I know uh, here. You I know. already have one. So. Okay, well, I'll tell you what. I'll take it back then. How about yeah, that? there All you right. go. I'll keep mine cold. <laughs> you like your beer warm either way, though. The thing about it is uh, it's already uh, shut down temporary until I can come up with some new oh. uh, shirt wear and okay. other stuff. So. so it's sold out. Yeah, it's sold out. Oh, wow. Yeah, so they, it's, it's pretty much done. So until we uh, come up with uh, more or new designs, it's um, right now it's uh, it's sold out. Dude, that is awesome! Mm-hmm. Look, my boy Josh has some. Yeah, Josh has some back there too, man. Like everybody's got some around town. Well, that's awesome. Well, okay, so follow him on Facebook if you want to get more. That's the way to do that, and also to check out his movie reviews, man. <laughs> How often do you review movies? Is it once a week? Uh, it, it depends. It could be, uh, once I first watch a movie that's in theaters, I let it kind of like, um, like percolate, think, put yeah. it in my brain, put the pieces together thinking it's as funny is the dialogue awful is finally look at it more and more. And then, then I see it for what it is and then put the review down what, what should be said about it. Do you give them like a score or do you just say... I, I just put my words up and my yeah. opinion, what I think of the movie and uh, should people see it? Do I think it's awesome or do I think it's awful? You know, some people have guilty pleasures of bad movies like myself and some others look at it like I think it was flawless and mm-hmm. other people think it's yeah, it was all right and other people think it's crap. What's and, a guilty pleasure movie for you? Well... There are different ones. There, there are ones from like uh, the late '80s, '90s, and 2000s, such oh, yeah. as um, let's think of Blair Witch Two: The Book of Shadows. <laughs> Blair Witch Two, yeah, right? That, it's so awful that it's good, or it's yeah. it's a good bad movie. It's so bad that it's good. Yeah. Others I like is like The Stepfather Two. Ooh, I haven't seen that one. Mm, let's see, um, like maybe The Room, the Tommy Wiseau movie. Have you seen that one before? I've seen the disaster movie. Okay, the movie about the. But room, I haven't yeah. actually seen The Room yet. It's absolutely bizarre. You should yeah. check it out. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh man! It's totally yeah. talk about like yeah like the joy that you get from something that is just absolutely insane. Uh, yeah. What about uh, Plan Nine from Outer Space? Have you seen that one? No, I haven't seen them. I'm trying to think. What are some other ba- uh, good bad movies like uh, Speed Two, Cruise Control? Oh my god! I watched that once a year. It's <laughs> whole, hilarious. You Speed Two once a year. It's yeah, great. once a year I watch that because when I watched the original Speed, how so oh, awesome that was. Absolutely. But then when you say, "Wow, there was a sequel," I really got to check that out. See how yeah. good or bad. I mean, it, it, it it's so bad that it's good. I, I loved it. I mean, there's nothing wrong with making sequels and movies if you can make it work. But sometimes it's best not even do it. 
But sometimes, even at the same time, I'm glad they did it because I'm just curious about it. Yeah, I, I I feel the same way. Like if a movie isn't going to be uh, eight, nine, or ten, I would rather it be a one, two, or three because there's I get so much joy from a speed two, mm-hmm. right? From a, well, oh, yeah. what if we did it but on a boat? I wish speed two would have worked because like they could. Yeah. What would the next one have been? What but on a space? They probably would have took it to the sky. Yeah, on an airplane. Probably, probably Air Force One with the yeah. president oh, of the United States. I would love that. <laughs> That'd be great. Okay. That, there yeah. there've been talks and rumors about going to speed three, but. You know, the more and more people said about it, it says no. I mean, it just did. If it doesn't make enough money, they're not going to go in that direction with it. People have forgotten about two. If they did three with Keanu and Sandra Bullock, uh, or oh my God, I would watch that in a heartbeat. Oh yeah. We talked about how the Oscars were just here, and those awards happen, but these are the real awards that people care about: the Chili Bowl, Mullet Man Awards. What movies last year just immediately? jump out to you um let's see cocaine bear um, oh hell yeah oh yeah what else um megan the flash oh i love the flash yeah man. people okay people shed on that movie i know and i thought it was so I know. much fun how great was it to see Michael Keaton back as Batman? Again? I thought that was impressive. Oh yeah, to see him back in the bat suit again. It was it was something else. I mean, you could tell that the CGI they use for the babies and some of the other yeah, stuff it looked looks rubbery, rubbery off. And then even the one that uh, was his name, uh, the other before the time. Oh oh, uh, uh, ben, ben Affleck. Ben Affleck. Yeah. That's the one right there. Yeah, those right there. I mean, I you could tell that the, it, the his cape was more like plastic and. And, you know, they're going in saving lives. Going, shoo, shoo, you can tell yeah. it's CG and all that. But, you know, I mean, I could see they tried so hard. They poured so much money into it. And it just didn't turn out the way it should. And the DC Universe, it just, it slowly crumbled. And it's part of the reason why it did that is because they rushed into it too quickly. Oh, they're yeah. trying to compete with Marvel, trying to get up there with them. And they should have done solos for each and every one of them. And maybe the, it probably would have performed better, but... Yeah. Yeah. I just, how much fun was it to see old school Batman back, like in a way? Oh, was, yeah. And he was kicking ass, too. That was the thing. Like, they did it in a way I believed it. Like, yeah. The one back in 1989 with, with uh, Jack Nicholson as the Joker. Oh, that's my favorite oh, one. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, Batman, Batman, what kind of a world do we live in where a man dresses up as a bat? This town needs a new hero. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this town needs an enema. Or an enema. That's yeah, what it was. Seen, I haven't seen that one in a while, but yeah. My yeah. wife hates that movie because I insist on watching it several times a year. It's a, a, a sickness. So, yeah, I, I was that jacked to see Michael yeah. Keaton back. And, at, and then when they did the, you could call it a sequel or just a continuation story years later with Batman Returns that takes place during Christmas. Yeah. I thought that was pretty impressive. See, I wasn't as big of a fan of that one because Batman kind of is a schmuck in it. Like, he doesn't do a whole lot. He just kind of sits around and watches stuff happen. But, like, Batman just looks around and goes, oh, oh, shit, man. Oh, hell. He's yeah. Hank Hill in that one, apparently, in my, <laughs> in my universe. Yeah, it kind of went downhill when we had, like, Batman Returns. I mean, not Batman Returns. Um, Batman Forever. Batman Forever. And then Batman and Robin, which they some people thought was even worse than oh. that one. I'm glad they finally got to the point. Yeah, we need to reboot it and start all over again with something called Batman Begins. I thought that the Nolan awesome. movies, the Nolan movies were just out of this world. And I know. I really enjoyed Forever. Like I know why a lot of people don't, but I thought the set design, the costume mm-hmm. design, I thought yeah. it was fun as hell. I really it was, enjoyed it. It was known as a, another guilty pleasures movie that's what it is what about a movie that's not so much a guilty pleasure to you and you've voiced your displeasure for it is uh the madam web madam web oh yeah that thing was a complete yeah a total dumpster fire it was it was a mess i i I don't know what was going on i mean why were these people doing this this movie right here it's like the people that the the actors that were in this like they're they're trying to do their best of what they have it's like 
is this the best they have for the script? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what's going on here? I have heard over and over again that this thing looks like a production nightmare, too. Like, the ADR, like, the, them voicing the dialogue is very poorly done. Oh, yeah. And it seems like, and perhaps it was true, they were rewriting the movie as it was happening. Yeah. Which just blows my mind whenever that happens. The main villain, when you notice uh, certain during the movie, you'll notice that uh, some of the the words are not lip syncing correctly yeah. with his mouth. And there were times he was turning his head and like he was speaking in a microphone like, like this or whatever. And then, you know, to say the words like that. And then they try to put that in there like his head's turned, like he's saying the words. Gosh. And, I mean... There, there were there were very poor decisions which direction were to take the movie. I mean, the story was complete garbage. I mean, I, I don't understand. Yeah, what happened? I mean, was everybody on LSD when they did this? Well, the, the bizarre thing is too is that Spider Man is full of a million awesome characters that you could oh, make yeah. a movie about. Yeah. And out of all of them, if I gave you a list, Madam Web would probably be one hundred, like number one hundred out of the rest. And even then, okay, whatever, you're doing your own take. Why make it shitty? <laughs> like, why make I your know. own take shitty? I, it didn't, so, yeah. And then I, I guess the reason that the dialogue doesn't match up is because they thought that they were going to be able to get more involvement from the MCU or whatever. Yeah. And then they, they found out during production oh, yeah. they couldn't. So, and then what is on the screen also in itself just isn't very good. Right? You said the performances sucked as well. Oh, yeah, every one of them sucked. Um, I mean, it was like, they're almost like, they're not even quite acting human. Like they're just, <laughs> just, just like, I mean, you got to have passion with it. It's like, oh, this person killed my family, blah, blah, blah. I mean, you got to put it like this person killed my family. I want this person held accountable for his actions. I want this done. If you don't put enough of that, you know, that, that spark and then into that character, it's like. It's lifeless, hollow. There's yeah. no, there's nothing there. It's like you just read from a script and says, "Okay, I'm just going to say it like this." I mean, if if there's and plus, if the script doesn't have enough of that spark that's in there for the person to act to give it that that go, it doesn't even it doesn't even feel real. It does. It feels like yeah, like they just got him off the streets. Says, "Okay, let's just get this guy read his lines real quick." Okay, let me go ahead and say it without even actually put enough of the process with the character, what he is. I mean, why? Why go through all that and spend all this money doing that and and put it on big screen? This sucks. That's what it is. And people are going to say, this is beyond horrible. What were they thinking? They're talking about movies that you do like, though. The t-shirt that you're wearing, the Scream series. Man. Oh, yeah. Do you like scary movies? Uh-huh. What's your favorite scary movie? Uh, I don't know. You have to have a favorite. What comes to mind? I love those movies so oh, much. Oh yeah, I haven't seen the newest ones either, man. Oh, they 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 are awesome. I love the way that they. It feels like they just took a uh, Wes Craven's, I mean, just spark and just brought it back to life again. The other one that kind of jumped up on me, which was Saw X. Oh man, how oh, great yeah. is that movie, dude? Oh yeah, Saw X. I mean, I was impressed, you know, throughout the the Saw series. No, number six. Oh, or yeah. not number six. Number seven didn't perform as well as it was expected. And then they tried to do again with the next one, like Jigsaw. I thought that was pretty cool. But then, you know, uh, they tried to, you know, try to, try to bring back John Kramer in this and have him like a cameo appearance in it and all that. And then when you see him, the next one, which was called Spiral, the, the yeah. Book of Saw, it was an interesting concept. Try to go into it, like try to reinvent it. But it didn't, didn't, it didn't get what people wanted out of that. And that was the one that Chris Rock was like in, oh, yeah. and he like he wrote it or had an idea yeah. for it, and then like that was supposed to be like the big comeback, and it didn't happen. And then Saw X came out last year, and I mean that is maybe the yeah. best one. I mean, it's arguably the best one. If it's not, it's de it's up there. Dude, the fact that the movie gave us what we've wanted the whole time, a whole movie uh, mm -hmm. with John Kramer, and then he's the good guy. Oh, dude, so great. Yeah, no, it's between the, the Saw series and Scream. The, between those two are, I think, are my most favorite ones so far. Um, you know, there were other great movies like the classics like Alien and Aliens. 
Alien 3 had its ups and downs. It was a mix of yes and no with that. And then Alien Resurrection, they tried to put elements in between that, try to get that to, you know, to connect that with it. But it was yes and no. That one was more like a guilty pleasure. It's like an uh, alien movie. And David then, Fincher, the director, tried to get his name taken off that movie mm-hmm. because he hated it so much. I know. It, it's like an embarrassment to his reputation. And it seems kind of sad that that movie turned out the way it did. And a lot of it was, you know, James Cameron, he didn't want to come back for another alien movie because he was occupied in other flicks. Sure, yeah. And, you know, and then you're trying to figure out who would be the next successor. They try to get the original director who did the first one to come here, but he was involved in other projects. Ridley and he Scott? Couldn't do it. Ridley Scott, correct. Yeah, and, he was doing, uh, like, a Gladiator around that time, probably. Mm-hmm. So I think the Gladiator was the good decision. Even with the Mar- one of the Marvel movies that kind of really sticks to me even today, which was... The Fantastic Four from 2015. That oh was that was God. that was a monstrously horrible Dude. flick. What were they thinking with that? I'm so happy that they're actually rebooting it again because mm-hmm. I thought it was it would never happen after they yeah. screwed it up. It twice. seems like it was like a curse too. Yeah. I mean, like uh, when you see the one from 1994, that's, that was oh, that was not right. even supposed to be released. They just yes. they just wanted to get a contract out of it through 20th Century Fox. Man. They just wanted to say. Uh, I'll tell you what. We'll give you the contract if you can come up with a Fantastic Four movie. We'll give you a million dollars, and you see what you can do with that. And if you say, ta-da, here's your Fantastic Four movie, and they destroyed all the advertisement, anything they had to make sure it never got released, because they knew it was going to flop pretty bad in theaters. But when you look at it from from one perspective, I mean, it looks really good for oh, between, yeah. between The Thing and some of the other Doctor Doom practical looks good. effects. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, I've watched that. You can watch it on YouTube. Oh yeah, you can see it for free. And the sad thing about that is that nobody making the movie knew that it was never going to see the light of day. Like they oh, were yeah. just like, oh, well, we're making, we're going to make the raddest movie we can with the lowest budget. And like, there's a lot of heart, and it's not, a, it's not a great movie. I'm not going to say that, but they tried, and th- so they screwed up there. And then they had the 2002 or whatever Fantastic yeah, Four. The Fantastic Four that once they about like eight, nine years later happened, then they decided to, let's see, okay, let's go ahead and reboot the Fantastic Four, come up with now a $100 million budget for the movie and see what we can do with special effects wise and find a good, cool, you know, actors that would be willing to, to do it and Jessica make it look Alba, really good. Michael Chiklis, uh, uh, who else was it? Was uh, what was it? Uh, uh, he was in um, Captain America. It was yeah, um, Chris Evans. Chris Evans. Well, yeah. Oh yeah. And then uh, what was the guy that played the thing? I can't think of his name. Michael Chiklis from The Shield. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Shield. And yeah. that one episode of Seinfeld where he had the high voice. I think that yeah. was him, right? I thought it was impressive for what it was. It, it was known as a good bad movie. It was so bad that it was good. I mean, I love the special effects. I love the the acting performance. It just wasn't big enough. It yeah. still made a crap load of money. I think they made like I made a sequel. Some kind of four hundred some million dollars, and it was just enough. To where they can go ahead and just says, yeah, let them go ahead and do a sequel. They originally intended to try to introduce that to the X Men series, but it just wasn't it just wasn't big enough for them to to do that. And they decided just let them go ahead and do the sequel, Rise of the Silver Surfer for two thousand seven. And it the, the the CGI and some of the stuff it just was slightly worse than what they had from the other one, and it just. The first one had a lot of good marketing and stuff from from Burger King and yeah, and I remember stuff. that. Oh yeah, the second one. The only thing I saw from of it was uh, I think it was a trailer and that was it. I didn't see no posters or anything with the sequel, but it was still it was still a good bad movie regardless. Yeah, I still enjoyed it, and they scrapped any possibility for a third movie and and then after that I think nine like seven eight maybe eight eight years later they came out with the new one. And a lot of it was was the director, and there everybody everybody else just <laughs> dropped dead after that. Yeah, well, that movie even like because when before that came out, the director disowned it, which you sh- is, are supposed to never do, right? If you're mm-hmm. a major or any kind of director, the, the director was like, "That's not my movie. They made it shitty. I'm done." And I don't think he's made anything since then. Shocking. And that came out in... Oh, has he made something? He, he did something else. I looked up, but uh, I can't think of it right now. 
probably like a Seven Eleven commercial in New Jersey or something like. No, nah, it was a movie he did, and I guess I guess it was better. I'm not sure. I haven't seen it. So. Well, it couldn't have been much worse. Yeah. So the there was something else he did to to redeem himself. He was supposed to Josh Trank, the director. He was supposed to do a Star Wars movie, which he. Which never that's happened. That's right. Yeah. No, okay, that's what it was because wasn't he was going to do Fantastic Four and then they were going to move him on to Star Wars, yeah. right? And mm-hmm. then that he that movie sucked so much. Fancy, like he was such an ass to work with mm-hmm. that they just. Oh yeah. I mean, imagine going from the next It kid. You know, hey man, you're the next Star Wars guy. To you're done. You, 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 Capone in 2020. Yeah. Co- oh, he did Capone in 2020. Okay, all right. Oh, a Tom Hardy movie. Well, there you go. I guess you... Uh, I can't even imagine that he got that work, though. Like, after that... Because Fantastic Four was so historically bad. Thank you, producer Josh, by the way, for that. He's our Jamie on the show mm-hmm. from, uh, from Joe Rogan. There was another movie that was called... I think it was called Chronicles or something that he directed. And it was a budget of $12 million, and he got back $112 million. They're thinking... Well, this was like a like a sci-fi supernatural type kind of movie. He did so well with that. That's yeah. Let's see, let's see what he can do, and let's give him this budget. That makes sense. This hundred and twenty million, and see if he can make five hundred or eight hundred yeah. million out of it. And instead, uh, they did the opposite. <laughs> yeah, they did the opposite. Yeah, let's give you this much, and then we'll make nothing based on it. I, yeah. Oh yeah, they spent one hundred and twenty million. All they got back was fifty six million dollars in the box office. God, that's crazy that you now, just, you have um, this in your head, man. You're a movie guy. Once they once they release once they release it on uh, Blu Ray and DVD and all that, which didn't sell that well. They got they got some more money in, and I think they finally got what's left of the the production from it, and and that was it, and. Oh, so they actually did... They got the rest of the money back finally. It took forever for yeah. them to get the money back. It used to be that you know you come out with a movie, and it might not hit so hard in the movie theater, but with Blockbuster and Walmart, like uh, Austin Powers did not do well at all, but it made so much money on DVD that they, they greenlit a sequel, and it just blew up. Yeah, I know. That's the thing about it. Sometimes movies that flop in theaters, they, they gain... They gained, uh, you know, a cult following like Event Horizon. There's one right there. Yeah. That one actually, despite, you know, you could tell you really love this because this interesting universe they created with that. But it, either it was because it was released at the wrong time. They didn't do enough advertising. Didn't uh, Paul W.S. Anderson do that, I want to say? Oh, yeah. Uh, he he guy, directed Event Horizon. He did Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat. The, I, I kind of like that one. You could tell the special effects were pretty cheesy. But, but I, man, when but I was it, a kid. But you could tell, you uh, could tell that, that they were trying so hard to make that work. Yeah. And then when the sequel came out, Paul Anderson didn't want to do the sequel. He That's just, right. he just, he, he was involved in other projects and he just didn't want to get involved with that. And so he decided to, says, no, nah, I, I don't want to get in a sequel. They'll give it to someone else. Someone who's never even done a directed a movie before. And it turned into oh, a total mess. Dude, what's so funny about that? We're talking about Mortal Kombat Annihilation, by the way, the sequel to, I love the, look, is the first one a masterpiece? Absolutely mm-hmm. not. But it knew what it was. It was fun. I loved it. Oh, yeah. The second one, 97's Annihilation. It looked bad. It sound, it, everything about it was bad. Almost nobody came back. And the special effects looked so, even for the time, they look bad, right? Mm-hmm. And they look so bad because they apparently did some sort of test screening where everybody loved it. Who the fuck knows why? And the movie, the, the, uh, the company was like, oh, we don't need to finish the special effects. And they didn't like. That's why like the bad guys look like they're you know CGI out of PS one games. You know, <laughs> I, mean, I mean it's it's crazy, dude. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. It's interesting. And the funny thing is, I've I saw the the original one many years ago, but I never saw the sequel until twenty twenty one. Oh before, lord! Before the new one came out. Yeah, and I like that the, the new one is not perfect at all. But yes, it's not perfect. It's got moments I really like. Yeah. I thought that the beginning of it mm-hmm. oh, yeah. uh, with Scorpion and Sub-Zero, oh, yeah. if the whole movie would have been like that, that would have been four stars yeah. to me. And then uh, I like the part where Scorpion, spoiler alert for this four-year-old, where, it, where Scorpion comes back. Oh, man. Yeah, I, th- I, thought, I thought it was awesome. I love the special effects. I love the story. 
I love I love the dialogue, everything. It, it, it was uh, it was it was really good for for what it was. What are, there, there were a few things about it, sure. but but yeah, I didn't understand why they had to make the hero a guy that isn't in the game. Like you have this rich history, like you have all of these badass characters, and then you're like, no, oh, we're gonna invent our own guy. Like what the f- no. No, just make him Scorpion. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's Scorpion's ancestor. Or he could just fucking be Scorpion. Yeah. Just make him Scorpion. Yeah. yeah. Now I'm yelling. People out there are like, well, he's yelling about Scorpion. I apologize. All right. You get these Michelob, <laughs> U- you get these Michelob Ultras in me, I'm liable to do anything. You are always showing, in addition to the movies theatrically you watch, the movies that you watch on PSP. Mm-hmm. You are uh, repping the uh, now. Does Sony? Sony's got to pay you. I mean, because you are the biggest <laughs> PS. No, and I love the PSP. I got one at home. I got my Darth Vader on the back, right? But you are repping that thing all the time. I love it. Now, now you're playing games on it all the time, right? Or are you just watching just, movies? Just, now? just watch movies and listen to music. Okay, cool. What what about the PSP do you like so much that is your go to like movie watching device when you're on the road? Uh, when I'm going from place to place, it just comes handy dandy when I'm eating and I'm just kind of bored and I just go ahead and just start it up and see what's, what I got in my, uh, movie collection and just put a disc in and there you go. It's and quick. I just start it up. It could be anything. It could be total recall. It could be Terminator oh, two. Oh. It could be, um, Willy Wonka and the chocolate factory. It could be, um, or Charlie and the chocolate factory, whatever, which one uh, you want to Not a fan prefer. of, not a fan of Charlie. Like Willie better. Willy Wonka. Don't okay. take it out of context. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, there there are so many others. There's even Ghostbusters. There's um, I mean, there's Underworld. There's oh so oh, good, yeah. so good. Oh yeah. Uh, as far as the PSP goes, are you going to be just keep on repping that? Till, oh yeah. Till the wheels fall I, I've been, off. I've been I've been using this thing since 05. Oh, so. you got it on you right now. Oh yeah. Oh, so the, can we take a look at it? Sure. Oh, I love it, man. The famous PSP, bro. Mm, now sure. I because I played the games on them too, man. I love it. I've. Uh, Let's see here. I know we were talking about some of the games you were playing last time that we... Oh, man, that's beautiful. Look, dude, look at that. The official case with the... Oh, I love it. Can we show the camera here? Sure. That is the, that's the famous... Now, I've got a PSP, but... Uh, you want yours, me to turn it on? Uh, yeah, if you want to. Sure. Yours is in much better shape than mine, by the way. This is an original, too. Yeah, I can tell. Mine is the cheaper version. Yours is the... Nice. Okay. Yeah. I love it. Mm-hmm. Dude, oh, yeah. you have a PS3, or did you ever have a PS3? Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I messed around with the PS series over the years. Yeah. One, two, three, four, and five. So I, I love that the operating system of the PSP is pretty much the PS3. It's like clean and simple and nice. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Now, do you have anything else that you stream stuff on? or No, I, I just play it off the discs. Whoa, go. look at that. Look at the can we show the camera again? Sure. Look at that. Beautiful. Yeah. So we got all the and those are UMDs. Those are the, got, those are the UMDs. Yeah, you slide oh, yeah. those in and you play games or watch movies on those. Mm-hmm. And uh they spin. That's the wild thing. Most of the hand stuff's always been, you know, mm-hmm. uh, a little memory card, but this was actually mm-hmm. a piece of media that, and I I dug it. It's super cool. Yeah, I know. I, I tried to you keep going, building up on my collection. I, I never keep an exact count of how many UMDs I have. I just buy them, and then I have them, and I just look and say, like, wow, it's amazing. Because back in the day when we still just had DVD only, yeah. you know, when you take a look at the UMD itself, they get, wow, they made this thing portable, smaller. Yep. I mean, there were they ones that had special on features. Yeah. And it, it got to a point where they just can't do it anymore because nobody was really buying them. And yeah. it, it ultimately, uh, some people say it flopped. But this was actually the best... Uh, console that, that they had out there at the time, so it actually performed really well. And and uh, they tried to again with the PSP Go, nobody cared for that. I love that. Then the PSP Vita. I, I love the Vita. I messed around with it a little bit, but it just it just felt I don't know. It just didn't feel like yeah. It, well, it, it doesn't feel like a PSP. Yeah, uh, and, it didn't feel like the. It, it's like they captured the spirit of this. And put it all in here and thinking like, yeah, movie theater in a pocket. Yeah. I mean, right there. I mean, it just it just felt perfect. Yeah. There and was something about it just says right. iconic and, and I like, there it is. I like the feel of the PSP as well. Yeah. Like, I think that like the Vita I, has more options and you could do more on it. And I like mm-hmm. it better overall. But I don't, that is my favorite like feeling hand. You can just, it slips mm-hmm. right in the pocket. 
You can watch it at Taco Bell. Oh, yeah, Taco Bell. It doesn't matter what restaurant, anywhere, or at home. I mean, I, I just I just love uh, watching movies while I'm eating or, uh, or just relaxing, waiting for whoever's here to see me for whatever. So, you know, that's the thing. Okay, now you have been a mullet man for a long time. You got the most oh, yeah. iconic mullet in the 217. Name me some of your favorite mullets in maybe cinema over the years. Cause I got, or or at least in general, because I got my favorites. Honestly, I I never really got into favorites with mullets. Well, it's, no, it's because because you've got the ultimate ones. So you know why why does Mickey Mantle have to watch people play baseball? He know he's the best at it. it doesn't matter. Okay, yeah. I like. Uh, uh, tell me, tell me, uh, just give me a thumb. Roger Ebert, thumbs up or thumbs down on the mullet. John Claude Van Damme in Time Cop. I, I I liked him in Time Cop. I thought that was pretty cool. The mullet. The mullet. Thumbs yeah. up on the mullet? Sure. Okay. Thumbs up on all right. Um, you watch wrestling at all? Uh, I never was a wrestling person. No, didn't watch Sid Vicious, bl- blonde mullet. No. Okay. No. All right. Okay. Well, we'll give him a thumbs up. I'll give him a thumbs up too. Okay. Mm-hmm. Let me thank you. Are there any? Oh my God. Thank you. you. All right. Billy Ray Cyrus. Mm-hmm. Classic mullet. Or no, or you don't you're not a fan of the I I'm not sure if I've seen it or not. Don't tell me. Yeah, we're going to pull up a picture of Billy Ray for you here. I've heard the, the lyrics of the music, but mm-hmm. yeah. Okay, we'll show you the mullet. What do you think about that? You like that? Uh, it, looks, it looks cool, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. All right, he said thumbs up. Is there a mullet that you don't like? Is there a mullet maybe out there? Honestly, I don't hate any mullet. Really? I, I don't one? I don't hate I don't hate anybody's What mullet. about rat tails? Do you think that a rat tail is maybe a pretender to the throne? Like you're not all the way in if you have a rat tail. Yeah, no? I, I, I don't You're such a jovial guy. I'm, I'm trying to get you to talk some shit about other hairstyles. Oh, you're, you're okay. Mohawk? You don't like the mohawk? Got pissed you off a little bit? Like, what are you trying to prove, man? The 70s are over. Huh? Come on. <laughs> uh, you have uh, told me before um, you love your mullet so much, no amount of money would you would take to yeah, cut that's, that Yeah, that's thing. right. Um, but would you ever, just out of your own curiosity change your mullet evolve it maybe uh you know f- do something different with it if you look through my childhood uh some of my pictures and facebook you notice that the mullet looked kind of a little different like maybe much thicker or maybe the way it was done so over the times it has evolved little mm-hmm. by little and it gets down to the point that's just the way i've always wanted it like this yeah uh, yeah. like, and you actually, do you actually use a chili bowl when you cut it? Nope. I just use a, a pair of scissors and I just cut around and then, and then I use a razor, go, go around uh, yeah. and, and then finally, you know, I do the sideburns and there you go. And it, uh, and I, sometimes I have to do a little adjustment cause I missed a few there mm-hmm. kind of down and go there and do that until finally it's perfectly the way it should be. I got to ask you, uh, as somebody who, you know, is cutting your hair and, and is, is into the hair and all that, would you ever consider maybe like shaving uh, a logo into the back of your head? Like, uh, like a 217 Problems logo? Maybe we could, we could, we could have it sponsored. Maybe we, <laughs> we'll keep up on it every single day. Or a Michelob Ultra logo. What about that? Well, if I ever want a tattoo, maybe I have it tattooed on my arm. Oh, maybe. there you go. Yeah, or you're something not like that. Yeah, you're not a tattoo guy. I'm not a tattoo guy either, man. I'm too. Yeah. I'm, I'm just so ghastly white. I need to be. Uh, unless you can find the perfect tattoo that says, "Yeah, that's for me." You know, mm-hmm. that, that kind of thing. They ever thought about kind of like that? sunglasses. You know, when you wear it, it says, "Yeah, that's me." Or, mm-hmm. And when I do the mall, it says, "Yep, that's me." You know. Now time catches up with us all, though. I'm starting to lose my hair. I gotta take a pill every day to hold on to that. You know what I mean? And uh, you're thinking that if you lose some up top that you're going to evolve the mullet? Or what are you thinking? I think, yeah, honestly, it'll probably stay the same. You know, I cut it back this short because uh, it, was, it was down my eyes and I wanted to get it short enough to where I don't have to worry about it for the next three to four months. I before love I that. Cut it again, so. Yeah. Yeah, so. It's smart. Just get it out of the way. Yeah, yeah. And then cut it like this and, and then and work with that and everybody loves it so yeah well you're gonna get that scary next episode if you don't hit us up there you go <laughs> make sure you hit that subscribe button i almost worked that we're gonna see you back here next week we're gonna be seeing chili hopefully real soon too say goodbye chili see ya bye-bye peace